Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's June 27th, 2018, and uh, I want to update you guys on some of the progress I've made on the mobile map, um, on my health um, concerns, and respond to some of the latest commentary um, on some of the content I've made. Um, thank you for everybody who's in chat tonight. I've got this new little chat window uh, feature here. I show everybody live on the broadcast. Appreciate you guys being up late. Um, so I just wanted to first start out by saying, you know, of course everybody knows everything I'm doing at climateviewer.com is free of charge and open source. Um, I ask that if you're going to support me monthly, do it on Patreon. If you want to send me a donation on PayPal, I greatly appreciate it. But right now I'm battling Graves' disease. And um, though, you know, I seem to have my, my thyroid is shrinking um, slightly. My uh, anxiety level is still through the roof. Um, and barely able to deal with it on a daily basis. Today was one of the worst. Um, but regardless, if you guys could support me, it's gofundme.com slash fix my thyroid. I still need to get a juicer. Um, I'm doing a dietary makeover, yada, yada, yada. I'd greatly appreciate your support on that. So, and thank you to everybody who has. Um, one of my stressors is this thing right here. And I swear, you know, um, I've had Climate Viewer 3D up for the last two years, and I got rid of the mobile map because it was such a headache trying to, you know, do climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, which is the 3D map, and weathermodificationhistory.com, um, and really making no money doing any of it. Um, and, you know, that's the same story that a lot of activists have. You know, you, there's no money in this. And, you know, I've contemplated uh making a business model out of it putting a shop up and all that and talk to lawyers and accountants and i don't the more i look at it the, the less i want to do things like that i did this all for free because you know i wanted to do um my good turn and you know it's my my way of um you know my escape i guess but regardless, um, trying to convert uh, 700 maps to this new format is daunting to say the least. But I really like how it's coming so far. As you guys can see, this is the new Climate Viewer mobile. It's going to be the front page for climateviewer.org. When you land there, there'll be a flat map, looks something like this. Um, brand new base layer chooser you can uh, flip between things like you know the National Geographic version of the map the undersea Delorme um, bathymetry as it's called um, pretty sexy uh, looking um, layer chooser on this thing now I really like it a lot um, coded that two days ago um, you know, and it's going to have still have the original Climate Viewer 3D. Um, it should work with all of this. And uh, when you click Add Map, you can sort by categories. Pretty cool. Or you can search through them. Um, as you can see, if I type in US and then I type in USGS, you know, it searches for that. If I type in Ionospheric Heater, it finds the, the heart map. So it's you know a lot of the features people have been asking for um there will be 700 maps here each of them to add them you can just click on it or click the plus that'll put it up on the map fly you to the location um the map um dots pop up in a nice modal like that it shows your active maps up here in the top corner you can collapse that you can click share it'll give you a sharing link for this screen you're currently on and a way to embed the map on your own website if you like um pretty freaking cool and then there's a trash icon here to get rid of it um same here you can toggle the layers on and off so you still have it up here and there's an information icon which will take you to a single page for the map. 
Um, and that was the big idea was that this will be climateviewer.org slash high frequency active rural research program HARP. Um, and it's a page just for that map. Um, so there'll be 700 plus pages um, on climateviewer.org instead of one. Because right now, um, search engines can't find any of the maps I've created. Um, and I want to be able to get this information out there. So I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes on that. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, you know, for each map, I have to go in and completely change the format. Um, it's a real pain in the butt. Buttocks before, um, basically like all of my, my climate viewer layers were all in one map file, one JSON file. And as you can see, they're listed here. Um, you know, things like where the file comes from, the name of the map, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I'm converting them to things like this, where it's, you know, the heart map. I'll actually bring the actual heart map up and you can see all the information I have to type in. I have to create a preview image for each one. Um, this is going to take me, I mean, I was thinking I might be able to get it done in a week. It's probably going to take me a month or two. Um, and it's very overwhelming <laughs> to say the least. But, you know, like I said, I really like how it's coming out. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a labor of love. I'm doing it for free. I hope that you guys will continue to support me. Um, on the Patreon, the PayPal, and especially on the GoFundMe right now because my thyroid is whacked out and I am stressed out. So that's the new Climate Viewer Mobile. It is coming soon. Um, it will have like lists of the categories as well. So you can see like just the maps from, you know, each category. It'll have a whole lot of ways of browsing the maps in different ways. Really looking forward to getting that done. Um, so I wanted to respond to some of the things from the past week. And as you can see here, I did an article called Trump's Space Force and Owning the Weather in 2025. Um, got a ton of views. Um, lots of interest in that. I also streamed that on Facebook. Many of you probably saw that. Um, but one of the comments over here, let's see if I can find it real quick. Where's it at? I thought I had it up on the screen already. My goodness, I didn't. Okay. Well, there was a comment here that I wanted to respond to, but Lord knows it'll probably take me forever to find it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Donald Trump's uncle, John Trump, was one of the scientists put in charge of Tesla's research after his death. So it's no coincidence that Trump is promoting a space force. I found that interesting. Um, and sure enough, that is exactly the truth. So Nikola Tesla's surprising connection to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And his name was John G. Trump. And he was uh, um, one of the uh, FBI agents that was in charge of the Office of Alien Property that was in charge of Tesla's patents and research after um, he passed away. So that is a big coincidence. Um, thanks to, who pointed that out? Let's see right here, uh, Wheezy668. I appreciate you pointing that out. Um, definitely a fact there. Um, it is no coincidence. Uh, I find that to be uh, pretty interesting important information i'd like to add that on to the video details so i'll make sure i add that to the article shout outs to you um next up we had geoengineering and breaking the water cycle now if any of you watch this video and nothing um, is being you know i'm in my suit and tie and this was for g edward griffin's um red pill expo and uh i got an interesting comment on that First of all, dude, can you blink? <laughs> I do blink, and apparently I didn't blink through the whole video, maybe, or something like that. But uh, Stuart Meyer said something fishy about this robotic presentation. This is not like Jim Lee. Was he coerced? 
And of course I responded, I am not a robot. How else could I do this for seven years without losing my mind? Even though I feel like I am right now. Um, lighten up. If I didn't seem like myself, it was because I was reading what I wrote and not speaking extemporaneously as I normally do. I take Mr. Griffin's events seriously, so you seriously, I said, so I seriously researched and wrote every word beforehand. And as you can see, that is all written out here. This is what I was reading. Um, and you know, hey, reading from a teleprompter while doing a live broadcast is kind of a new thing to me. So, if I look like a robot, hey, I'm a robot. <laughs> I am whatever you say I am. But anyway, dude said, well, it wasn't being dark. Something genuinely struck me as being a little off. Fair point, though. Accuracy of information is the most important thing in any case. You read better than I do. I definitely appreciate your work, though. Now I now that I know there was nothing fishy, I can relax and absorb the info. So for any of you that watch the video and just seem like, what's up with Jim? He seems a little weird. Um, that's because I was given 15 minutes to try to explain something I normally do in an hour. I'm Southern and I was reading, um, not to mention with my swollen thyroid that, uh, that thing barely even buckled. So it was kind of tight around my neck. Um, regardless, I wanted to represent it well. So there you go. Geoengineering and breaking the water cycle. Check it out on, um, climateviewer.com. It's a very important video. Um, where I break down, you know, the three major causes of what I consider climate change to be today. Um, next up was geoengineering, solar radiation management, SRM versus ERM, cirrus cloud thinning. And I did this infographic, um, you know, to kind of break it all down. And there's a whole bunch of references in here, you know, for people to, to dig through and, uh, I hope that you guys will check it out because it really explains a lot of the misconceptions about chemtrails and geoengineering and what's really going on today, what the plans of the government are, and how they don't give a damn about what you have to say. Um, but when I broadcast this live on uh, Facebook, you can see that right here, uh, Heath K. Diane, or Diane as I call her, Jim, so what about the additional crap being shot out of nozzles? Mike Decker might be a great resource on that as he has video, videos the planes daily. Um, now, I've seen a lot of nozzles. I've seen a lot of ballast tanks. I've seen a lot of chemical tanks. I do intend on making a video about that specifically. Um, a lot of what's sent to me is fuel air dumping. Um, fuel air dumping is a serious problem. A lot of them are flame retardants, um, you know, planes that put out fires and somebody called it a chemtrail plane. But some of it isn't as easily explained as others. Um, you know, pylon drains, all of these things. I will be making a video about that in the future. This video was not about that. This video was about how, um, you know, if you burn chemicals, from jet fuel, how you create clouds, and you know what the government's agenda is regarding jet fuel, biofuel, and making clouds by day, none by night. So I will address that in the near future. Um, and then over on the YouTube version of that same article, um, this guy said, I like your representation, but there's something missing. What about the warming of the polar regions and stripping of assets? Just the oil in Russian sector is said to be valued at more than 23 trillion. So that's another big truth um, to this. And that's why, you know, I was focusing on the warming aspects of this, you know, how cirrus clouds are melting the poles. And, you know, on the one hand, you've got one group that wants to make all this go away and they want to you know they're the the ipcc crowd the climate scientists that want to fix the sky and make sure that these geoengineered clouds only cool the planet don't heat the planet but you have to remember 
Who, produ who produces the fuels? The fossil fuel industry. Who wants to melt the poles? The fossil fuel industry. So I responded to him to come over to climateviewer.com slash matter. You can do that by going to the top right here. It's also on the front page right here, the chemtrail page. Um, but when you come over here, scroll down to the frequently asked questions section and in here, there's one called Are Cirrus Clouds Melting the Poles? And if you scroll through this, what you'll realize is that for a hundred years, yes, people have wanted to melt the poles. And that's what I'm pointing out here, uh, to move Earth and melt the poles. $190 million Newfoundland jetty, jetty would cause the axis to shift and end the iceberg menace. Send the Gulf Stream unchilled into Arctic's heart, abolishing fogs and extreme cold. Um, and that was from 1921, Carol Livingston Riker. Um, before that, Jules Verne um, in, 19, in 1889 talked about firing a gun that would tilt the planet's axis. So, ironically, that's exactly what happened with Fukushima. The axis of the planet tilted. Um, Herman Oberth, 1929, uh, talked about giant mirrors on a space station that would focus sun's radiation on Earth's surface, melting the poles. The most dreadful weapon, also known as the burning glass. Um, the Nazis called it the sun gun. Um, currently, we do this with HARP and, uh, you know, creating an artificial ionospheric mirror or BAE systems laser develop atmospheric lens, a lens in the sky to focus sunlight. So, yeah, there's the possibility there. Then Julian Huxley, who was Secretary General of UNESCO, said let's explode atomic bombs at appropriate region over the polar ice caps to melt them and then that's exactly what they did they detonated 2053 nuclear explosions total and a lot of those were at the north pole so did they try to melt the poles seems like they did um m Gorodsky and valentin cherenko cherenkov placing a metal ring of metallic potassium particles into earth's orbit um, to diffuse light and thaw the permanently frozen soil of Russia, Canada, and Alaska and melt polar ice. Well, they proposed it in 58, and by 1960, one, we were doing that with Project Westford Needles, where we put all of these metal particle ring in space. They dumped 280 million dipole antennas in, into space. Um, and they said they did it to create an artificial ionosphere, but it also coincides with these two Russian scientists saying, hey, let's put a, pl a ring of metallic, uh, they say potassium, but metallic particles in Earth's orbit to melt the poles. They did that, Project Westford. Um, <clears throat> but more, more to the point, in 1966, the Committee on Atmospheric, let me blow this up, the Committee on Atmospheric Sciences and National Research Council stated in their report, Weather and Climate Modification Problems and Prospects, the jets were creating too much water vapor and that could raise the Earth's temperature by 1.6 degrees Celsius. Um, and they said that a five-fold increase in stratospheric water vapor would raise the temperature of the Earth's surface by 1.6 degrees. Well, it just so happens that the IPCC if you listen to what they have to say, they say the exact same thing. They don't say they don't want to melt the poles. They don't want to say they don't want this, you know, 1.5, 1.6 degree heating to occur. They say they want to limit the heating to two degrees. And the reason why is because the agenda all along has been to melt the poles. And that's exactly what's going on. Cloud war cloud blanket warms up melting ice cap. Greenland ice sheet melts more when it's cloudy. Um, you know, this is the original post that, you know, got all the attention about it. And there you go. Clouds play a bigger role in melting of Greenland ice sheet than was previously assumed. Compared to clear skies, clouds enhance meltwater runoff by a third. Those are the findings of the international study that was coordinated by the KU Leuven and published in Nature Communications. So, I mean, going right back to what I said in my article, um, you know, 
that's what's going on. They're creating a blanket over the planet that trap heat. And yes, they're melting the poles. So more to the guy's question, well, you know, this is really all about, you know, the oil. You guys need to look into this one, the new Cold War, drilling for oil and gas in the Arctic. This is all on my chemtrail page. Um, the new Cold War, Russia sends troops and missiles to Arctic as Putin stakes claim on region's oil and gas reserves. Counting the cost, the new Cold War, the race for Arctic oil and gas. Vanishing at 13% a decade, the melting ice is expected to make way for drilling, mining, make drilling, mining, and shipping easier. America falling behind the new Cold War over Arctic oil. Um, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group came up with this one. The Arctic Natural Gas Extraction, Liquefaction, and Sales Proposal, or the ANGELS Proposal, talking about fracking the Arctic to save us from methane doom. And it's water vapor, not CO2, stupid. Um, that's the American Chemical Society. The point, the Earth has certainly been warming since we've added so much CO2 to the atmosphere from fossil fuel burning. Reply, forget CO2. Water vapor is the most important greenhouse gas. It controls the Earth's temperature. So, between planes putting water vapor in the sky, which they do, and making clouds, which they do, trapping heat. Um, yeah, they're melting the poles, and this is what they're after. And you can see right here. Areas highly probable for oil and gas reserves, borders within the Arctic region, and all of that is oil and gas. So, you know, do you want to believe the hype that they're trying to save the Arctic, or are they intentionally trying to melt the Arctic? I'm going to go with um, part two. So, real quick, um, can I ask a question? If the government's controlling the weather, why do they keep it so dry in the West uh, In the West to continue the fires? And this week, flood-soaked Florida and a massive wildfire in Big Bend. Um, you know, at the end of the day, water resource management is what this is all about, the water wars. So, um... One of the big problems with California is something called overseeding. And overseeding is when you put too many particles in the sky for rain to fall. And if you end up, um, you know, putting so many particles up there from ship tracks out in the Pacific Ocean that, you know, basically the clouds never even reach California, um, then you have several major highways in the sky over California. And these are constantly computer controlled highways where planes are flying north south, north south, um, laying down streams of aerosols. So, if you put so many aerosols in the sky, yes, it's going to shut off rain. And they know this. This was Cal Water 2015 study. Um, and, you know, it, are they doing it on purpose? Um, I, I usually don't speculate about that kind of stuff. I want to be a valuable source of re, you know, information for people. And me saying I know for certain something I cannot prove makes me look like a jackass. And I don't want to be part of the jackass committee. If you want that, go watch the mainstream media. Um, but yeah, there, there were uh, talks as early as the 1800s from a guy named James Pollard Espy, the Storm King. And he said that we should light massive forest fires on the West Coast to seed rainfall on the East Coast. So, is it a coincidence that, you know, there are all these wildfires and there are massive, you know, floods on the East Coast? No, that's... that's known science that's putting cloud seeds up there soot from the burning ashes are going to coalesce on water and make you know floods on the east coast um but you know that's just the reality of the situation you know they they're overseeding the sky off the coast of um California and the Pacific they're overseeding the sky directly over California and then they're doing cloud seeding on top of that so California is really screwed. Um, they mainly rely on meltwater runoff from um, from mountaintops. It's called snowpack augmentation. 
And that stuff usually only runs from October to March of each year. So, you know, if they don't get enough snow on top of the mountains, you know, all the cloud seeding in the world is not going to save them when you have ship tracks off the coast, plus the U.S. Navy, um, and all the other issues associated with that, plus, you know, Texas stealing your atmospheric rivers, California stand, you're screwed. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my answer to your question over there, Tracy. Um, so I, you know, like I said, guys, I'm going to continue to work on this map a little by little. Um, it's going to take a while. I uh, got a lot of work left to do. Um, but as you can see, it's coming along nicely. Got some cool features in it already. Um, and you know, I want to peg away at it, but I'm trying not to get stressed out about it because I know how much work I have left to do with it. And, um, you know, dealing with my health concerns, um, my stress level, I get really stressed out dealing with the social media because it's overwhelming. Um, I get hundreds of comments per day and just trying to keep up with them is a full time job. I have a uh, two daughters and a wife. We just got uh, three chicken or three rabbits, uh, seven chickens and four ducks. Um, I have a garden in my backyard I'm trying to grow right now. And um, my father owns a trailer park and I'm trying to fix up a trailer next door to try to rent it out. But regardless, my money is tighter than Flipper's butthole. And, you know, trying to afford all this organic stuff, detoxing, doing a video every night, um, while programming, it's just, uh, I'm in need of a vacation. And I am taking one very shortly. I intend to go to the beach here in about a week or two. Um, and so you guys will, you know, be missing me briefly, I guess, but... Like I said, um, I'm going to continue to plug away at this. Right now, I've only put five maps in there. I've got all the base layers working and all the regular features like the sharing stuff and all that. Um, but create, recreating all 700 maps, making pictures for them. Um, even thinking about it stresses me the hell out. <laughs> But, you know, this is something I, I want to do, I need to do. It'll eventually be done. And uh, for all the people who haven't been able to enjoy Climate Viewer 3D, um, you'll be able to play along too. Because I understand that not everybody can afford, you know, a, a very nice PC with a 3D graphics card. Not every, you know, cell phone can do this stuff. Um, so I want this to be available to as many people as possible. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm um, just giving a quick shot. There's your California problem right there. I mean, it's like all the clouds are eaten up by the ship tracks. As you can see, the ship tracks are right there. I'll go down here to the 367 band and highlight that. You can see them very clear as day. That's a boat right there. That's its chemtrail. That's a boat. That's its chemtrail. Um, and these ship tracks mix out here in the Pacific and then magically right up here by California. There's so much pollution and aerosols in the sky that there aren't even any clouds. And that leaves you guys high and dry. Um, really sucks for you. But, you know, of course, by the time it makes its way across the cloud seeding tundra, um, because this is where they do all their weather modification. I'll scroll down here to geoengineering and just show you guys real quick. Um, these are the actual reported weather modification activities by the government. I'll fire them up real quick. And then I'll show you the cloud seeding generators from around the United States really quickly. And you'll kind of see the picture. So the big picture is this. There are no clouds here. <laughs> this is where all the weather modification occurs. And then by the time water actually sticks to all of that crap they put in the sky, we've got, you know, hurricane NATOs, you know, of rainfall falling on the East Coast. And this has been going on for the past 50 years. So 
these are all the cloud seeding projects just in California. And as you can see, they don't mount to a hill of beans and certainly not a hill of snow. Um, that's your big problem. So, yep, I'm a chicken man too, dude. Um, <laughs> Paul, I, we, we little did I know, um, but last year we had, you know, we were taking care of my grandmother with Alzheimer's, my, my wife's grandmother with Alzheimer's, and we had chickens, and we started eating way more eggs than normal, and I've come to find out that basically... Graves disease and eggs don't really mix well. <laughs> um, and that basically part of the reason my throat swole so much may have been because of how many eggs I was eating. And that's just a highly unfortunate. What's up, Ernest, man? Drive drive that truck carefully. I hope you're parked, brother, man. What's up, Patrick Meyer? Love you guys. Appreciate you. Um... Eddie O'Brien, you had a great video on your um, wall the other day. I really enjoyed um, the guy who does the, the voice. Um, he did Led Zeppelin. It was pretty epic. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but regardless. I do appreciate you guys, and um, you know I do want to respond to comments every now and then, and I will continue to do that. Um, like I said, you know I've got a lot going on. I do all this stuff by myself. Um, usually in the middle of the night, exhausted and, um, you know, dealing with Graves disease, you know, I don't even, I'm, I'm out of medication at this point and the earliest endocrinologist appointment I can get is September 27th. So I'm literally going to be relying on, you know, juicing and using, I got a Nutribullet, thank God. Um, but I'm going to be doing a lot of raw, um, you know, vegetables and stuff like that. Um, kale, ginger, cucumber, lemons, um, and, you know, some of the CBD oils and, you know, kicking my punching bag for stress relief. But, um, it's been a very rough day for me today. Let's just say it that way. And I hope that you guys will continue to support me. I really need your help, um, you know, keeping up with this whole Graves disease thing. Um, it's a pain in the butt. And I'm going to need to, you know, get a juicer, obviously, and continue to be able to afford um, all this organic stuff because it's way out of my family's budget range. So if you guys can uh, contribute to the GoFundMe, I greatly would appreciate it. And uh, keep your comments coming. Um, you know, like I said, I'll uh, I'll keep making the memes and doing the research and uh, having fun with this as much as I can um, when I can. And if I can't, I just won't do it. But um, I got to focus on my health first. And right now, um, especially today, I'm just not feeling it. So I'm gonna cut this video short. Um, I hope you guys will continue to support my work. Love you, mean it, and um, remember that I'm trying to provide people with information here, and information is power, so with that power comes great responsibility, and all I ask is that you attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.